Since 1923, Roy O. Martin, a Louisiana-based wood products company, has followed the example of its founder and given back to our Louisiana communities where we live and work. Information at RoyOMartin.com. Louisiana Healthcare Connections is more than Medicaid. Whether you're trying to raise healthy kids or need health coverage for yourself, it helps to have good Louisiana folks on your side. Louisiana Healthcare Connections, connecting you to quality health care. The tireless passion of Charlie Weems is undeniable. Charlie has many loves, including his family, a distinguished career in law, the LSU Tigers, and getting out on a golf course. Charles Stovall Weems III was born in Riverside, California. Dad was born in 1943, and his father was in the war. So he didn't really get to see his dad and that much until he was, or really get to know his father until he was about two years old. And so up until that time, he spent a lot of time with his grandfather, his mother's father, who was the superintendent of education for the state of Mississippi. And I think that's where Dad learned a lot of his convictions and his integrity and able to see the good in, in all people. Charlie grew up in Alexandria. After graduating from Bolton High School, he made his way to Louisiana State University in 1962. There he earned a reputation as a top flight student who made it look easy. Charlie was at the top of the class and able to maintain that position with what seemed to be relatively little work. Uh, he maintained his, uh, his scratch golf game and uh, was elected editor-in-chief of the Louisiana Law Review our last uh, year in school. So he was acknowledged as uh, universally, I think, as the, the top man in the class. I, I remember someone telling me when he was the president of Sigma Chi at LSU, he was the only president at Sigma Chi to be elected president for two terms because he wanted to see what they had started reach its full development. But Charlie's stellar life and career was nearly cut short in 1982. Weems, who was also a pilot, was on a business trip in Oklahoma. His engine froze at 6,000 feet. Charlie escaped from the crash with just a few cuts and bruises. In 1996, Weems was named president of the Louisiana State Bar Association. The LSU Law Center selected him alumnus of the year in 2002. And in 2009, Weems was honored by the Louisiana State Bar as Outstanding Attorney of the Year. These are unusual abilities to be both a highly respected trial lawyer and yet an equally highly respected business corporate tax attorney. So I, I do believe Charlie could handle anything you wanted to throw at him. Charlie sat on the LSU Board of Supervisors under five different governors and served as chairman twice. During that span, he played a key role in recruiting football coaches Nick Saban and Les Miles. It really changed the look of LSU athletics. Uh, Charlie was a real motivator in, in uh, the selection of, of Nick as the head coach, brought him in at that particular time. After Nick left, uh, Charlie was involved with Les Miles coming to LSU, and uh, they developed a, a great friendship. Back in central Louisiana, Weems was pivotal in making LSU Alexandria a four-year university. You can give Charlie a lot of responsibility for uh, uh, what LSU A is today, and it's a, it's a fine facility in the middle of the state that's important to us. In addition to his love of LSU sports and LSU academics, one of his other great passions is playing golf. We actually spend a lot of time on the golf course, and what's funny is that some people might think, oh, well, that was a way of him getting to do what he wanted to do and spend time with his children as well, and which might be true, but I never looked at it that way. He always uh, made time for us. Mostly what I admire about him is his integrity. He's very, he, he does not waver. He's committed, he follows through, he stays true to his convictions, and he sees the good in, in everybody. Good evening, I'm Beth Courtney, and this is Louisiana Legends. You've just seen a short biography of Charlie Weems, an extraordinary gentleman from Alexandria, and we are fortunate to be here with Charlie in his law office in Alexandria. And Charlie, I am so, congratulations again on being a Louisiana legend, and I'm so happy to be here with you. 
Well, thank you, Beth. It's a pleasure uh, for us to host you in Alexandria. You know, we don't get a lot of people coming through here for a purpose, so uh, <laughs> glad well, to see you. Hopefully, LPB is always on the air in Alexandria, no our doubt. station. We think about it, um, importantly. You know, I was wondering, how did you feel the evening we had the celebration? Did your family enjoy it as well, and did you, or was it a little nerve-wracking? It, it was nerve-wracking. Uh, I mean, we had a wonderful time. Uh, LPB was... Uh, just a wonderful host. The people were all fantastic. Uh, it was so much fun, but I was apprehensive about it. Why is that? Well, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I didn't exactly know what would be said. I had looked back at other legends in the history of the uh, event, and to be honest, there weren't a lot that looked like me. Uh, you know, they were all famous athletes or authors or, or politicians or that sort of thing, so uh, it, it takes a lot to intimidate me, but I was a little intimidated by the setting, but it turned out to be just a wonderful night. It's a nice mixture of people, and I think that's what I love, the fact that at a Louisiana Legends event, you have people who are really at the top of their fields, and their fields may be extraordinarily different, but yet they all share something in common, and that is an appreciation of their heritage in, around Louisiana. And you certainly, you're here in your hometown. What does Alexandria mean to you? Well, it's been... Uh, an absolutely fantastic place to grow up, which I did, uh, and raise a family, which I did, and then to pursue my profession, you know, obviously, which I, I also did. Great location, great people, easy to get to the big city if you want to go. Uh, it mm -hmm. was just right for me. Well, one of the things that I think that's so nice is continuity. You have been practicing law, what, 47 years? Wow. You know, young people today, change careers about every three years, they say. Can you imagine what that's gonna be like? What do you think the legal profession is gonna be like in the future? I, I don't know, it's, it's a very different profession now uh, than the one that I grew up in, uh, to say the least, and it's hard to, uh, it's hard to know. One, one good thing about the profession, though, is that the education prepares you to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think kids that come up through law school, if it turns out that the practice of law changes or they're not able to, uh, to do what they wanted to do, there'd be a lot of doors open for them. Who's your uh, perhaps biggest mentor? You talk about mentors, people who help you in your mm -hmm. career. Is there any one lawyer that stands out? Or you know, really, really there were a couple. Phil Whitman at Stone Pigman, mm -hmm. uh, where I first started practicing in New Orleans. Uh, Pappy Little, who became a federal judge here in central Louisiana, was a, had a great influence on me. Uh, Camille Gravel, uh, who ended his career in our firm uh, was just an incredible lawyer, and, and every one of those men and, and my partners uh, as well, uh, you know, we're all mentors, and that's such a critical thing in any profession, but certainly in the law. Do you feel a responsibility to do that now for young people yourself? I do. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you, you know, you're really shirking your responsibility if you don't uh, do what you can to pass on the lessons that you've learned and, and uh, help them grow. It's just uh, part of what we do. Is there any one case that stands out in your mind that you look back on and say, ah, oh, this is a hallmark moment. This is a, something I'm going to remember. I don't know, Beth. There have been so many uh, big cases. Uh, you, you know, it, uh, the, the ones that kind of stand out, stand out for different reasons. Uh, you know, I remember when I first got to New Orleans, uh, we were trying a case involving the heirs of Pierre Leon Burris. Hmm. in which uh, a small uh, Cajun family from the coast uh, was taken on Chevron. And uh, w as I recall, we were minimally successful, but it was uh, just made a huge impression on me because of the way Phil Whitman let me participate in the case. You know, I tried antitrust cases down there, and then when I moved back to Alexandria, the first case I tried was a dog bite case. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had to call Whitman about that and let him know that I had landed with my feet on the ground. Oh, but it's, well. uh, you know, it's just been one interesting experience after another. Uh, I tried a case here in Alexandria back when uh, obscenity was mm -hmm. a big thing in which the Rapids Parish District Attorney decided that uh, the movie The Last Picture Show by Peter Bogdanovich written from the book by Larry McMurtry. I remember that, Was yeah. obscene. It was, actually, it's one of my all-time favorite movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of Phil, I got to uh, defend the movie. And, uh, you know, that made a, 
a big impression on me that I could do things in Alexandria that were just as important as anywhere else. So that's it's a been good, a fun ride. A good lesson to learn. Well, you and I, I guess, first met when we were on the campus at Louisiana State University, and you've certainly had a love affair with LSU throughout the years. Uh, you've been chairman of the board of uh, LSU Board of Supervisors. You've been involved in the foundation, fundraising. And of course, I guess the average person really wants to know, all, you've been on the sidelines during football games as well. Uh, has that been fun? And I guess you've been there with Nick Saban and Les Miles, correct? Uh, I have been. I was also there with Jerry DiNardo, so I've seen, the, uh, <laughs> I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, I guess, on the sideline. But it has been it has been fun. You know, I went down there uh, really when things were dark uh, to try to figure out what was going on and, and to see if I could learn some things that might help us uh, hire a good football coach. Um, and I did, and it's just kind of grew from there. And I've been down there so long now, I think most of the folks down there have no idea why I'm there. <laughs> and I'm not sure I do either, but until they run me off, I guess I'll stay. Well, now I have to ask you, so have you ever seen Nick Saban smile? Yes, but not on the sideline. But not on the sidelines. Well, one of the things that's always troubled me about um, our time, I guess, at LSU is that we were really behind the curve at LSU in fundraising for a foundation. It seems like the Ohio States and all that of the world did a whole lot of private fundraising before LSU turned around and decide to do that. Why do you think that's the case? I, I don't know, Beth. I think it's a, uh, something that our whole state was guilty of. I mean, if you look back the years that we were so rich in resources and, and had opportunities to uh, set our state up, to set higher education up like Texas did, we didn't do it. And I don't know why it is, but it certainly uh, was short-sighted on the part of the people that were making the decisions at the time because we, we're paying the price now. Uh, I think we've come out in the last few years and, and done a, a much better job of fundraising, but as you say, we were way behind the power curve. Well, you certainly have been credited with expanding LSU in Alexandria to a four-year university. Now, uh, can you give us an inside background on that? Well, you know, when I, I got involved with, um, with LSU and started studying higher education, I realized that we had what I referred to in the legislature as the great black hole of higher education in central Louisiana. You could draw a circle on a map and there was there were like four or 500, maybe 600,000 people that weren't within 50 miles of a four year school. And for the people that uh, would go to an LSUA, for the most part, uh, they couldn't go to Baton Rouge, you know, mm -hmm. or to, to Lake Charles. Or people would say, well, why don't they go up to Northwestern in Natchitoches, it's only 55 miles. It, it might as well be on the moon. You know, they're mostly place-bound, working men and women and, and kids, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they just didn't have a place. And so that was the focus of it. And it's, I think it was, uh, it was very true, thank God the legislature and the governor mm -hmm. at the time saw the wisdom of it. Uh, we finally got it done, we've struggled. But you know, the last two or three years, LSU has had the greatest growth of any uh, institution in the state and has grown, you know, 10 or 20 percent the last uh, two or three years when other schools weren't growing at all. So uh, I'm real proud of it. Well, some people say we should have earlier on developed a more robust community college system too, which now we're doing that it combined with the technical. For those who are not going to go on to a four-year school, that was sort of a gap too, wasn't it? It no. was a gap, and I'm not sure that we addressed it necessarily in the right way, honestly, yeah, yeah. Uh, because we decided that we needed to build separate community colleges rather than co-locate them with four-year schools as some other states do, and save maybe some of those brick and mortar dollars, put them in programmatic. Yeah, I always thought that. Know? Why couldn't you just have a programmatic thing or get an associate degree in the same buildings locations? Buildings don't give degrees, right? Makes sense to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> and there are a lot of states that do that. But that's not the choice that we made, and at least we, we make the investment into the community college system. That's, gonna, that's a good thing, because it's, it was sorely needed, and, and it's still needed. Now, you've decided not to be in politics yourself. A lot of attorneys, you know, end up dabbling in politics, although one would say that being on the LSU board, you have to have some, some acquaintance with politics. Yes. Who, what, what governor appointed you originally? The first governor that appointed me was Buddy Romer, and I served under five different governors, and it is certainly political. 
although I was sorely tempted from time to time and asked, uh, I just never really wanted to get into politics as an avocation, you know, as a uh, moth to the flame kind of a thing. It, uh, I'd rather work the other way. Looking back on, we spoke earlier about mentors and everything. Of course, your father, you said he had worked for the same company his whole life, too. That's exactly right. Worked for J.C. Penney Company, started in the stock room, went to war, came back, worked his way up, eventually became a manager, uh, and got to Alexandria, and they wanted him to be a district manager and go to Dallas or New York or somewhere, and he said, no, this is it. I'm staying here, raising my family, and, and thank God he did. Well, do you travel a whole lot? I know you probably do to play golf, because notoriously your children say you love golf. Is that true? It is true. <laughs> uh, golf is a, one of the two things I can do and not think about work. So it, it What's is the other? <laughs> snow skiing, believe ah, it or not. Okay. <laughs> It's been a great thing, hobby for me over the years. Uh, and you know, traveling comes and goes. It just kind of depends on what you're working on or where you're working and what you might want to do at a particular time. And I've certainly done my share, but uh, I like Louisiana, I like home. What is it you like especially about Louisiana? You know, I really love the people. It's a diverse state, not only, you know, racially and from a socioeconomic standpoint, but if you, if you look at the great uh, difference in people's ethnicities and backgrounds, uh, religious uh, attitudes, everything, our state's got it all. Well, and certainly in central Louisiana, it is the hub, as we say, sin law. And, and I recall, though, growing up, when we'd visit my grandparents up in Shreveport, they certainly didn't know about crawfish. We never heard of Mardi Gras. I mean, it was, but now the whole state seems to have learned a lot about different parts of its own state, right? There's no question. <laughs> I mean, you know, Alexandria is a great uh, place where you can experience it all in a lot of ways. I mean, because we've got, you know, 30 miles to the south, we've got Marksville and Vic right. and, you know, I mean, people, you know, Cajuns to the core and 30 miles to the north, it's, it's uh, as hard a redneck as you'll find <laughs> up in the Piney Woods. So it's a, it's a, it's a good marriage. It's a good Good melting pot. Well, are you worried though about, it seems like we are losing population in some parts of the state. When England Air Force Base closed here in Alexandria, there's a push to turn it into um, an industrial park. And I know Union Tank Car came here. There's been a lot of effort to do, build new businesses in this area. Is it a challenge to do that? It's a challenge um, to attract big businesses. I see. You know, uh, they said that when England, uh, Air Force Base closed, it would be the death knell of Alexandria. Well, it wasn't. We became the, the poster child for base reuse articles in the New York Times and so forth. And it's been a wonderful success story, really, for the community. And we've had a lot of businesses come in, but the truth is that Alexandria is a bit of a flat line economy. When other places are doing really well, we don't look so good. But when they're in the ditch, uh, we look great. Because, you know, we move along with steady growth, uh, there has been some population loss, and I attribute that to, uh, to the fact that we don't have a lot of, uh, in this part of the state, industry, mm -hmm. a lot of, lot of uh, you know, big box kind of jobs. Uh, but, you know, we, we've held our own. Mm -hmm. I wish we'd do better, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think we will. Well, certainly, uh, it seems like the Red River is forever being uh, in, in somebody's bill. We're doing something with the Red River. So uh, many times downtowns have turned their backs on the river. I know Baton Rouge did on the Mississippi, mm -hmm. Alexandria perhaps downtown did as well, but now there seems to be sort of an idea of refurbishing downtowns. Exactly, and Alexandria is certain in the, uh, certainly in that mode right now. You right. know, we've got a, a, a downtown park. Uh, they decided, uh, for better or worse, to put the new community college right mm -hmm. smack in the middle of downtown. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. But our, our downtown is coming back. The Hotel Bentley's about to reopen again. Again, so, <laughs> I recall uh, that. I recall, uh, we've done we're, stories on that. Yeah, so. we're, we're excited about that. Well, one of the gems you have here, I think, is, is Kent House as well, which is a lovely place. And uh, I was uh, recounting how many years ago I came up with some travel riders uh, for a familiarization tour of central Louisiana. And we went to places that I should have known about having li living just right down the road. And I think one of the things that it distresses me sometimes is we don't go out and see what's in our own backyard. Right, no, there's no, no question that's true. And we've, you know, redone Fort Randolph and Fort Bulow over across the river. 
right. a lot of Civil War stuff, you know, along with Kent House and, and other places. But as you say, you ignore the history that's at home. You know, you're always looking somewhere that's else. That's right. Do you like fishing, hunting? Are you a sportsman? You know, I like duck hunting. Mm. Uh, but I, as I've gotten older, I like gentlemen's duck hunting. <laughs> you know, and what is that? Tell me. That's where you go out and <laughs> you have a guide and you come back in and somebody else cooks for you and somebody else cleans the ducks. That's the big thing. <laughs> if somebody else cleans the duck, it's a gentleman's duck hunt as far as I'm concerned. That sounds Because back in the day, you know, you, you did it all. Tell me about your family. Did they enjoy the time uh, with you at our Legends? Uh, your, your wife is actually an old friend of mine. <laughs> I think they did. I think they all had a great time. I was really sorry my daughter Conway couldn't be there. Uh, she was out of town, but her husband was there, and my son uh, Stovall was able to come in, and, and uh, uh, Laura's uh, son and daughter were there, and we, had, you know, we, we just had a terrific time. One of the things that I think about is you're, you're, you're given an honor, but you look forward and you think, what are the things you haven't done yet that you want to do in the future? Be they personal or professional? You know, Laura and I were talking about this the other night, and uh, there's not much that I haven't seen that I really am dying to go see. And some of the places that I thought that I really wanted to go see, based on world events and happenings, I think I've decided that I'm okay not seeing them. So uh, I think that the traveling that really we really want to do uh, now is go to some places in the states that we haven't seen, Maine, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I do love going to France. I'd like to go back to France another time or two. And surprisingly, I found out in my uh, older uh, years that um, I like taking a cruise every now and then, something that I thought would absolutely drive me crazy, but it turned out to be pretty fun. Maybe you've calmed down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Maybe, maybe that's <laughs> it. I know you hate to give advice to people, but imagine that you're talking to one of your grandchildren and you say, so here, here's some, some, some advice uh, that I'd like to give to you about uh, your career. What advice would you give to them? Well. I think the best advice that you can give anybody about a career is some advice that my grandfather gave me when he found out uh, that I might be interested in going to law school. He said, I talked to the best lawyer I knew and asked him what made him a good lawyer. And he told me it was because he worked harder than the rest of the lawyers. And I suspect that's probably true in most professions and in most jobs. If you work hard, the success will come. If you don't, you're putting your future in somebody else's hands. Well, do you think you're ever going to retire? You know, people ask me that frequently, Beth, and uh, I really don't want to retire. I don't want to do nothing. I like being relevant. I like what I'm doing. I like having an opportunity to continue to, to give back and work for the organizations that I'm still working with. So that's one of the great uh, advantages, one of the great leverages that the law does give you. You can do it as long as you're able. And right now, I'm able, so I'm doing it. And so we're going to see you on the sidelines come this football season? I think so. I mean, I'm <laughs> still able to get down there. This season looks like it's going to be an exciting one. I don't want to miss that. Now. It does indeed. And we're hoping um, that some of the difficult troubles we've been having in Louisiana uh, in this you know, summer of discontent, if you will, uh, doesn't have an impact on LSU. Well, I hope it won't either. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so tragic uh, to see these things in our state. Um, we're imperfect, all of us are, all of our institutions are. The, the way we deliver our services, you know, whether it's law enforcement or social services, uh, it's imperfect. Uh, but if we're going to progress as a people, we've got to come together. And I always hope out of the darkest of times, you know, that there will be a silver lining. And I hope that this, you know, that there'll be one out of these recent tragedies. Uh, I hope our, uh, our university's football team can help bring the community together. Sounds silly, but in a way it, it can happen. I actually read uh, an article about that just recently, and certainly after Katrina, that's one of the things that happened. After the Hurricane Katrina, when they had a game that sort of brought everyone together, and the Saints doing that as well. So it's not so far-fetched. Right, and I've seen our, you know, our kids, we have on that LSU team right now, we have great character. I mean, from the stars like Leonard, on down, just great character. And those kids will lead. Uh, and I hope the community will follow. Well, thank you, Charlie. And it's been a real pleasure being here with you in Alexandria. Thank you, Beth. Thanks for coming.
Right. And thank you for joining us this evening on Louisiana Legends. It's been a great visit with Charlie Weems. I'm Beth Courtney. Good evening. Louisiana Lottery is proud to join LPB in honoring the 2016 Louisiana Legends. Contributing over $3 billion for K-12 public education, the lottery is giving Louisiana a reason to smile for 25 years and counting. Chenier Energy values the role we play in communities where we operate and live and have provided over $1 million to worthy causes in the past year. Chenier Energy looks forward to continuing our relationships with our neighbors in southwest Louisiana in the years ahead. For a copy of this program, call 1-800-973-7246 or go online to www.lpb.org.